All right, welcome back, my children. So today, what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to attempt to show you, is how to create a pest in our little farming game here. Now, if you remember in Stardew Valley, um, every morning there would be a chance for a crow to come by and eat your crops. Um, and the way you would prevent that is you would create a scarecrow, and then no crows would go around that particular area for your crops. So if you see here, I'm going to just till some land and plant a seed here. And then I'm going to plant a few, whoops, I'm going to plant a few seeds over here. And then I'm going to plant another one. Uh, let's go right here. So as you'll see, if I press the pest key here to summon the, the pest, whoops, okay, well, there you go. You'll see that um, it took a couple of key presses, but um, these that were near the scarecrow are, were protected, and then two rabbits appeared and took the other seeds that had planted um, that were away from the scarecrow itself. And as you see here, if I keep pressing the key, the button, uh, the pests never appear again because the scarecrow is protecting them, uh, the seeds. So that's essentially what I wish I had to do, um, how to create a scarecrow so you can protect your crops and then create a pest so that it will randomly select from your planted crops and then if it's not protected by scarecrow it will eat it okay let's get started okay so the first thing that i did or at least the first thing i'm going to show you is the pest itself so the pest itself is a character body 2d right yeah it's a character body 2d um and the reason why i did that is because there's a bunch of built-in functions within the character body 2d that if later online, I want this this pest to move, um, I can just use those built-in functions. Then the next thing after that, I gave it a hitbox, which is just an area body 2D, excuse me, an area 2D, and then a collision shape. Um, this hitbox is just to detect if the pest ever comes in contact with your seed, and if it does, then it's going to eat the seed and it's going to remove it from the game. Then we have the body collision. Um, this is just so the character body 2D parameter is um, satisfied I think if I delete it you'll see yes delete body collision you can see here it gives me a little error message so we're just gonna undo that and then finally um, we have the sprite 2d which is pretty obvious it's just the sprite now I only did one sprite um, because the rabbit just appears on screen eat the the crop and then disappears but if you want it to uh, run away or, or jump or whatever then you can just animate those and then you'll be on your merry way all right so now okay so like i was saying before um this thing extends from a character body 2d um for our rabbit here whoops um so in the side of the script here we have a couple of functions or a couple of variables here. So we have a runoff timer. All the runoff timer is is just how long the um, rabbit's gonna stay on the screen. And then once this thing reaches zero, it's just gonna get rid of it. Um, here, this uh, variable was for, um, originally it was gonna be for a global script, but I decided not to make it. So this was just to make sure that um, if this code has ever already been ran, then it doesn't do it again. Um, yeah, in fact, you can just ignore that entirely. It's not necessary. Then this offset here is for the position of our pest itself. Um, don't worry about that. I'll show you how to use that later. But just know that it's to keep our pest in the center of the tile. Next up, whenever the uh, pest is called into the scene, uh, the very first thing that I did was um, I put the self position equal to vector 2 minus 2,000. Uh, on the X and minus 2000 on the Y. This is to make sure that it's off the screen. Um, what I probably should have did was put an, a conditional here to say if there was any crops on the field then trigger this, but um, that would have required a global script and I just didn't feel like coding for one. So yeah. Then of that, I have a load pest and this is the bulk of the code that I wrote. So the very first thing that I did was I created a variable and uh, I decided that I needed to get the current scene and then I need to get the nodes, all the nodes that were in the group of cropped. Now, originally what I was planning on doing was um, adding all the crops to a node and then having a for loop iterate through all of them. Um, but that's pretty taxing, so this was a much better solution that I had found. Um, yeah, so all this is going to do is going to find all the nodes 
uh, that are in the group of crop. Now, if you remember in our last lesson, these crops here, when they were added to the scene, I would add them to a group called, I think, all plants or plants. I can't remember, but I changed the name to crop. So if you haven't changed it, feel free to do that now or, you know, name it whatever it is you want to name it. But anyway, it's going to find all the crops or all the nodes that are in the group of that particular um, string that we say. And it's going to get it from the current scene. Then after that, I need to find out what the number of crops are. So this is going to find out how many crops that we've currently planted. Um, so it's it's going to get all the crops that are, where, where, that are within this group. And I'll keep in mind, though, um, the group has its own list. And it's going to automatically create that list. Um, every Or it's going to add elements to that list every time we put a crop in here. So it's going to get all the crops within that list. And we need the size of it. That way we can get that number. So if, if we have five crops that are in that group, it's going to give us a number of five. Then of that, um, I need the pest to get a random number. Um, and that number is going to be one of the elements within that list. So I have a new variable called get crop to eat. And then it's going to get a random int in the range of zero to whatever the max number of our crops are. So let's say we have five crops. It's going to, just going to choose a random number from zero to five. And whatever that number is, we can use it to f get that particular crop. Okay, so what I'm saying is if we have a crop, um, if our number of crops is greater than zero, meaning we actually have crops planted um, on our farm, what we're going to do is for the X and Y position of our pest, we're going to go through all of the crops. We're going to find out which crop that it chose that it, it wants to eat. It's going to get the parent of that because it's based off of the area. But, but I don't think the areas have positions. So we need to get a position of its parent, which is the sprite, which does have a position. We want its x and y, and then we want to get its offset. And if you remember, the offset is 8. And the reason why I chose a variable is because if I ever decide to make the tiles bigger, I can just go up to my offset and change the number to compensate for that. And I only have to change it once. All right, And then after that, um, we're going to, again, go to the crops. We're going to find out which crop it chose. And then, again, it's going to get the parent of the area 2D. And then there's going to be a method inside that um, inside that parent, because it has a script, called eaten. Now, the reason why I have a minus 1 here from the numbers, and I don't know why it does this, but it's just to keep it from going over its maximum index. So let's say, for example, we had five crops. Um, this number will never be 6 essentially so again don't know why it does that but it does and anyway so after it gets the parent of the sprite and it finds it looks in the uh, script and it finds the eaten all the eaten is is this method right here or this function and all it's going to do is queue free so if this thing is ever triggered it's just going to get rid of whatever cropped that is okay and then after that, we have a runoff timer. Um, this is just a countdown, so it's going to take, um, it's going to minus off one from that 60 that we have up here, every single frame. And then if it ever hits zero or if it's less than zero, queue it free. And that's just going to get rid of the pest from our scene. And then don't worry about this function of test. It um, was obviously for me testing out just to make sure that the thing um, up here. Um, this code right here. If you remember, this explanation mark means the opposite of two. So all we're doing is we're getting the cropped, right, that we have here. And inside that cropped, it's going to have a function uh, called check for crow. And if you go here in the seeds, you will see that I have a new function here called check for crow. And it's going to return is protected. Now, this is protected is a variable that's up here. As you can see here, it is protected, and it's automatically set to false. We, we're going to set it to false because um, we want the default, no matter what happens, um, whether it's protected by a, a scarecrow or not, whenever we set it, we're just going to assume that there's no scarecrow around. And then we'll change it later, depending if there is one or not. But anyway, so we have an is protected. And when this thing is called, it's going to return whether it's false or true. And if this thing is false, when we call it, 
If it's false, um, that means that there is no scarecrow that's protecting it. Then we could run this code. And then if it comes back as true, then it's just going to ignore this, uh, this code and the crop won't be eaten. Okay. All right. So now on to the plants here. Okay, so in the plants here, we have an area 2D. And in those area 2Ds, we attached a signal to it. So you click on signal here, and then you just hit connect, and then it's going to ask for whatever the script is, and you hit connect, and it'll give you this function here. And all I'm saying is, if the area is in the group of scared crow, then is protected is true. So all I'm saying is, if this area is, a scare, is part of the scared crow, then this seed is protected. And if for whatever reason, if the scarecrow is removed, destroyed, or maybe you have like um, a timer on it so that after so many days the scarecrow gets dilapidated and it gets destroyed. If the seed is ever um, removed out of the scarecrow, we need to reset that or we need to account for that. So if the area group, if scarecrow and it's removed from it, then is protected is equal back to false and then our pest will be able to eat this crop again until we put another scarecrow here. Now, something to note, um, you'll have to manually add these signals to each and every single one of your crops. Um, it's a bit tedious, um, but I couldn't figure out a way to do it automatically. Originally, what I was going to do was like emit a signal and uh, do it that way, but then I realized that this signal would only ever trigger if the collision shape... Um, or the, yeah, the area 2D was ever entered or exit, so I would still have to add those signals anyway, so it kind of defeated the purpose. But, um, yeah. Okay. I think that was all for this. Yeah. Okay, next up for the Scarecrow. Okay, so here's how we did the Scarecrow. I created a Scarecrow uh, using a sprite. This is just for its actual image again, obviously. Now this one I gave a static body 2D because it's never going to move, um, but it still needs a collision. Or at least I wanted to give it a collision. That way the uh, player can't walk through the scarecrow. Um, obviously it needs a collision shape. I just gave it a round one this time around because um, I didn't want the player to get stuck on like the harsh edges or anything like that. Um, next up that I created a node 2D. Now you don't actually need to do this. Originally what I was going to do was create little tiny squares for each and every single tile that it was going to protect. But I thought it was pretty inefficient. Um, so I just went with one big area instead. So you don't really need this. You can honestly just add it to that. But I'm just gonna leave it there for now. Um, but yeah, um, I created one area 2D, gave it a collision shape, and then I... Okay, there was no signal for this. Okay, good. Okay, now to explain something. In Godot, each of these little squares here is 8 pixels by 8 pixels. So for my game, I created, um, all my tiles are 16 by 16, and the entire game is based around that. So each of these four little squares is actually 16 by 16. So if you have a bigger tile, um, then you would have to, let's say, 32 by two, 32. It would be four squares across and four squares down. That would be 32 by 32, right? Yeah, so it would be this big-ass block here. So just something to keep in mind when you're like making the size of this. Um, so I just wanted to, to protect um, a, a three by three area. So it protects nine tiles. So this is tile one, tile two, tile three, tile four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And if I go into my debugger and put visible collision shapes and hit play, you will see that these tiles right here are all protected. So these nine tiles are protected. Now in Stardew Valley, um, it protects a much bigger area than that. Um, but I'll leave it up to your discretion. I'm dealing with this small ass farm, so I just kept it to a very small size. That way, just, just proof of concept, yeah? Okay, and then finally the script, which honestly isn't anything to write home about. It's literally just getting the node of the area 2D and adding it to the group of Scarecrow. 
And that's that. By the way, I call that scared crow because the crow is scared. Ha 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 ha. So funny. Anyway, um, I think that is the end of that, actually. Um, I don't remember me doing anything else for this. Oh, yeah. And uh, finally, how I called the pest was super simple. All I did was, um, you can put this anywhere. I just put it on the tile map because I felt like it. Um, you should probably have like a script that automatically triggers it every um, after a day has ended or a day's beginning. And then, you know, um, use the variable here, has, crop, has eaten crops, to um, make sure it only triggers um, once per day. But anyway, um, I did an on ready variable, get pest and then i just preloaded the um the scene with the rabbit in it and then down here i just created uh, a, a condition for an input which is, this is key zero the zero button on my my numpad so whenever that's pressed it's going to create a new variable called spawn pest it's going to get the original pest and instantiate it and then it's just going to add that child to the scene and then that's the end of that so yeah all in all, I think we are we are good. Whoops, I guess I should turn that off. Because it's not necessary anymore. Yay! All right. I don't know what I'm going to do next, my children. I do not know. But I probably might maybe do NPCs. I don't know yet. But yeah, this is starting to work out just Gucci. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something. Um, I guess I shouldn't be celebrating. <laughs> and until next time, my children, if you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comments section below. I do answer, or at least see all of them. All right. Farewell, my children. Until next time.